sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please explain. Yesterday was a day. Hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Performance Wow. Today, once again, we have been given an amazing video. According to my subscribers, this is really a video to watch. As you all know, we are not Muslims. We are Christians, so we just want to give our honest opinion about this video. And here with me, I have a guest, Mr. Presh Keys. And I'm Andy. So, because, you know, we believe that one thing is peculiar to all religion. One thing is peculiar to both Christianity and Islam. And that is the message of love, the message of peace, the message of forgiveness. So, wow. So, I believe through this video, we'll get a better understanding about the Islam, we'll get a better understanding about the Muslim religion. And today, we are presenting a video by Ahmed Adidat titled, The Difference Between the Bible and the Quran. Wow. I'm really looking forward to see how this is going to go because, you know, as a Christian, we use the Bible. So, let's see how this is going to go. Yesterday you proved that the Bible was not the word of God. How could you now quote the Bible to predict the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Please explain. Yesterday was a debate. A format had been laid out. Originally it was 50 minutes, 60 minutes and 10. Both sides had 60-60. But the format was, whoever speaks first has 10 minutes at the end. Because every advantage has a disadvantage. So both speakers speak 60 minutes each. Now, with that format, you have no time to explain each and every position. So what is the Bible? So what do we consider the Bible to be? As a whole, per se, we say, this is not the book of God. And I proved it. According to all reasoning, according to the book itself, the internal evidence that Moses didn't write the books attributed to him, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't write the books attributed to them, not only is it not the book of God, but it's not even the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You're talking about 24,000 manuscripts, I challenge you, there's no two are identical. So you've got 24,000 different Gospels. Which one? You just picked to the pick that suited you, you accepted it. Who authorized you? Council of Nisi. They said, we take this, we take that, we take that. All the Gospels that are now accepted were not accepted at one time. It's now pick and choose what suits you, you accept it. That's what you have done. And you say, now it's the Word of God. But now the Word of God is in it, in the book. The Word of God is in the book. The Word of the Prophet is in the book. The Word of the Historian is in the book. And pornography is in the book. Now I have to explain all that to you. I said, you see, I give you examples about the Word of God. Like in the book of Deuteronomy. You see the verse I quoted in Arabic? The same thing is in the Bible. Almost an identical idea is there. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So who is this I? God. He's speaking to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. That I will raise them up, a prophet, from among their brethren. From among the Bani Ismail. The Bani Israel are being addressed, is that from among your brethren. Like unto thee, like you, like Musa. And he will, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So he says, this I is God. You don't have to be a theologian or a DD or an evangelist. Anybody will tell you on the plain reading of it that these are not the words of Moses, these are the words of God. Another quotation from the book of Isaiah, as if God is speaking, and God is speaking. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Who's that? Isaiah? No. No Jew says that Isaiah claimed divinity. They would have killed him. 
if he did. No, he's speaking on behalf of God. God is speaking through him like a mouthpiece. This is the job of a prophet of God. He is a mouthpiece of God. He hears the words of God and he conveys them to you. So, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no savior besides me. Who? God. God is talking. This is the word of God. You don't have to be a professor of theology to see that. There is another type of evidence in the Bible. See, now, if it was a lecture, I would have been, done all this last night, but this is a debate. So whatever the man is throwing at you, you can't start grappling with everything. The caravan is moving and the dogs start barking. You don't start the caravan moving back to chase the dogs. You've got to move on. You've got to do your job and get, get on with it and finish your job. There was no occasion for explaining all these things to you. You see? Then there is the word of the prophet of God. Example, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Who is this? I, Jesus. Jesus is talking, the word of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, who is this I? Jesus. Words of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, who is this I? Jesus. The words of a prophet of God. Then there is another type of evidence in the Bible. First was, as if God speaking. Second was, as if a prophet was speaking. Third, what does the historian how does he speak? He says, in the Gospel of St. Mark, so while he, talking about Jesus, in bracket I put Jesus, while he was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon. But when he, Jesus, came, there was nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. Who's writing? An eyewitness or a your witness, not God and not Jesus. So you see, another type of evidence. Word of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian. And there was that other type of thing I was suggesting, and I lost $100. You remember, if you were there, I lost $100. I wanted Brother Swaggart, you know, to read a certain chapter from the book, from the Bible. And he ignored it at first, maybe he had no time, and somebody from the audience prodded him again. He says, you know, look, what about that chapter as a keel? And there was $100 also involved, so he read it. But he read it at 60, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so one of your university students, while I'm sitting there, he comes to me. He said, look, he read, but uh, I didn't know. Uh, so what was the joke? I said, look, one thing is, you are at a disadvantage. You are an Arab from Arab country. You don't know English too well, number one. Number two, that the English that he was using were, was archaic, old-fashioned, from the King James Version. You see, we had given him that pamphlet, which was in, from the new international version, modern language, where you call a spade a spade. But he was reading from that archaic Bible. I can't blame him for that, because he uses that. King James, he read it. And you don't know English too well. That's also a disadvantage. And he was reading at that speed I told you just now. So these are all the facts. I said, look, what you do, you go and read it, you know, in that pamphlet and you see what he was reading. So he read it. You know, bulk of the people, I'm sure, they didn't catch the joke. You know, the speed, his pronunciation, he was not as emphatic when he quotes other biblical verses. You know, he makes every word and phrase to go down your throat or down your ears. But here was something different, 60 miles an hour. So, <laughs> there is that type of thing, which I said, no decent man can read it to his mother, sister, daughter, or even his fiance if she's a good woman. Now, what you have to do is you have to go and read it yourself to know what was read. You didn't catch the joke. It's no fault of mine. You see, you don't understand English too well, and then, you know, the, the speed, and the archaic language, all these things were factors where you don't catch the joke. Yes. But if you catch the joke, then, you know, something that no decent man can read in his church or to his family, right? So this is it. There's another type of evidence. So we have the word of God 
in the Bible. There is the word of the prophet in the Bible. There is the word of the historian, an eyewitness or your witness in the Bible. And there is that other type which we say pornography in the Bible. Now, we also have such a thing in Islam. We have the word of God in the Quran. Only Allah's kalam. He doesn't tell you stories. We know an incident in the life of the Prophet wasallam that a Christian deputation had come from Najran in Medina. These were Arab Christians. They had heard that another Arab, he is claiming that he is in communication with the Almighty. He's a prophet. So they said, let's go and cross-examine him. Let us go and see what he knows. So they came to Medina and they were housed in the Masjid al Nabawi. They ate there, they slept there, and they had a dialogue there for three days and perhaps three nights. And when Sunday came, our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he offered the masjid to these Christians to offer their prayers. He was so broad-minded, not like us. See, some of us, we are, you know, we think our masjids are superior to the masjid the Nabawi that our Nabi had. No doubt, in construction, yes. He allowed them, gave them permission to make their prayers. So during the course of this discussion, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. Say, all right, now tell us, O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? And our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he doesn't fumble. You know, well, you see, it's like this and like that. No, he doesn't do that. He is the God of Abraham, Moses, and David, and Solomon, you know, who spoke to Abraham. No, he doesn't talk like that. See, when the question is posed, what is your concept of God? So the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as if he was pressing his spiritual buttons, trying to contact Mahfuz, the head computer. So, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard that. There were no buttons to press. I said, as if, I hope you people understand that. Then when I go away, don't create a controversy. He said, Muhammad pressed buttons. You know, he had a computer. I said, as if, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Comes the answer through him. Qul, say, Allahu ahad. He is Allah the one and only. Allahu samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakun lahu kufan ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. And you see, this is our concept of God. Now you see, it's on a different level. He is made to say, Qul, say. He's asking, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard him say that. But comes the answer, say. It doesn't fit into normal speech. They are asking, what is your concept of God? So you don't tell him, say. Somebody asks you, what is 12 times 12? What do you say? 144. Am I right? 6 times 6? 36. You don't say, say 36. Say 144. Do you say like that? No. Why say? Because the words are being put through his mouth from fi lawham mahfuz, from the preserved tablet, from the head computer. See, he's in contact, he's got that machine. Spiritual buttons. Ya Bari Ta'ala, he's communicating. What shall I say? He says, say, hu Allahu ahad. Now, that I say. Look, all these things that I told you is not in the Quran. In the Quran, you open Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, you start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Say is Allah the one and only. Allahu Samad. God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufu an ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. That's all. Where he was. What was the occasion? What, how did it come about? Nothing. So only the word of God. Everything else were the details given to us later on. They said, look, this is what happened. People who were eyewitnesses, your witnesses, what's happening. What our Nabi said, what happened. All that put together is our knowledge. You find the other de details in the books of Hadith. Words of the Prophet, separate volume. Allah's Kalam, separate volume. Hadith, words of the Prophet, separate volume. History, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Rushd, Ibn Taymiyyah. Great writers, great writers, separate books, separate books. And our Arabian Nights, also separate books. <laughs> yes? <laughs> you know the Arabian Nights? You know, fairy tales, those filthy, dirty stories were circulating around the campfire. You know, the Arabs also had something to pass time with. You know, pre-Islam, before Islam, and even maybe after Islam. You know, under Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, we don't know how the empire developed. And they were wanting to pass time, you know, 
somehow lightheartedness <laughs> ah, jokes filthy dirty stories you stole around the campfire right they're written now in books Fitzgerald he translated it the Arabian Nights the unexpurgated edition I read it and I enjoyed it very much as a young boy Ooh, I loved it you know <laughs> the unexpurgated editions but it's separate it's not in the Quran it's not in the works of the sayings of the prophet it's not in the works of a historian separate book so we have the words of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian, and pornography all in separate compartments. They have it all in one volume. Oh, wow. What an amazing message. What an a spectacular view. Yeah. You can tell that this is really very educative wow yeah yeah and you know we are christians so it's you know it's very difficult for us to you know totally agree that the bible is not the word of god oh, yeah. yeah but i do believe with this point you do have some you know some point and some reasons to you know be able to say that the Bible is not the word of God. And he also explained, it's not like generally saying, it's not like he's saying the Bible, it's not like he's saying the word of God is not inside the Bible. According to what we understand from the video, it's not like he's saying the Bible is not actually, it's not like he's saying the word of God is not inside the Bible. The Bible. But from his point, why he said the Bible is not the word of is not the word of God. He's saying that though the word of God is inside the Bible, but there are other things about history and and other different things that have been added in the Bible to make it the, to make it the word of God. So it's actually saying that those things are not the word of God. The word of God is the word that actually came directly from God. Just like he said, I, I command you, yeah. I, 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 I. But the word of history and some other understanding have been added to it. So he's saying those things were not actually supposed to be in the Bible. the Bible. If the Bible actually was to be called the word of God, that means it's only the I, 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 what God said that is going to be in the Bible. Yeah, I think that is the point that he's trying to say. It's not saying the Bible is not the Word of God. I believe he's trying to say that though the Word of God is inside the Bible, but other things about history have also been added to the Bible. And according to the point he was giving, he said those things were supposed to be put in a separate book. And the Word that came directly from God was also supposed to be in a separate book. And he also gave example about the Quran. He said the Quran that it's not as if those things are not also in the Quran. But it's not, are not also in Islam. They also have history in they also have history in in the in they also have history in Islam. What he's trying to say is that though they have history but the history part have been made in a separate book have been made in a separate book so i believe this is a point is trying to give so i also like to hear the opinion of one of my guests yeah actually i understood what he was saying and it's also educative like you said it's also trying to like tell us the difference between the bible and the Quran, and, the Quran. and why the bible, and why the bible yeah so like he said i i which is directly the word of god yeah and also made mention of jesus he yeah he, like he, he was like trying to like separate the i and the he yeah. so the he now means jesus christ speaking directly, directly to, to his people yeah. so then the i he was saying means god speaking to his people directly yeah. from him so that was what he was trying to like explain and making us understand the difference between the Bible and the Quran and also the history books. Yeah. Talks about the history, the history books. Yeah. yeah. 
talks about the history. I think he was trying to say that, you know, that the history, the uh, trying the history that is in the Bible. John, he was talking about the story of the fig tree. The fig tree, yes. the fig tree that, yeah. that it wasn't, it was not in season. Yeah. Then, because Jesus went and it was, it was leaves. Because of that, you know, you know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because of that, and it was saying this is not directly from God. God, you get these are history. It's not about you saying someone said this, someone said that because about a prophet about that. So all these things have been documented in the Bible. So he was trying to say that though the word of God is in the Bible, but these things about history were not supposed to be added to the Bible. So he also said this history also about discoveries are also in Islam, but they have been kept in a separate, separate book, book and not added to the Quran. So I believe he, though I believe he do have points in what he's saying. So we we'll would like to yeah. hear your Yeah, I'm still looking okay. at what okay. Still looking at what he said. Okay. Uh, I, I also believe that we can still learn from the history. Yeah, yeah we, we can, can still learn from the history. So the fig tree he was talking about, like Jesus, at least it's also taught Christians a lesson that Jesus can do miracles. Okay. Like there can, there, there can be so many miracles performed by Jesus Christ, which is the Son of God. So Jesus Christ performing this miracle now, it means that he's actually the true Son of God. I don't know if you if, if, if you understand. Okay, like he's actually the true son of God. So God, okay, let's say let's let's say for example, God can do this. So okay. He empowered Jesus Christ to do what He can do, since He's not okay. in the physical world to do it. So He sent Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. So according to what He's saying, He's saying is that you know the history. Why the history were added to the Bible is to let people take that. To you know, understand different things about life. Yeah. So this is our honest opinion about the video we have watched. We also like to hear your comments. What can you say about this video? What can you say about the Bible and the Quran? And what can you say about what the speaker and the Adidas have really said? So do you believe what he says? And what are your points? So keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Bye. Bye.